Hello and welcome. Raise 3D finally has its own brand of TPU. And then we have our new PVA Plus. Also, we'll go jump into Idea Maker, uh, changing the settings and things you can do to get the best results out of these materials. Uh, this is the new Raise 3D TPU. And I've been getting really, really clean results off of this material. Uh, it still has, you know, a bit of flex that we need in here, uh, but it is essentially the same shore hardness as uh, like a polyflex. Um, but in my experience, it's been really, really nice in uh, the amount of string that it has. It's really clean. And then also, um, I've been getting uh, less jamming with this material in particular. Uh, TPU can be notorious for uh, jamming quite extensively. It's a bit difficult to deal with, so you might need to change, you know, extruder tension and uh, the feed on these machines. Um, but with our new material, it's been generating really, really good results. Uh, and then in the PVA, going back into these, uh, the new PVA Plus that we have uh, is still optimized for working with PLA materials, um, but it absor or it dissolves uh, a bit quicker and a lot cleaner than the original PVA that we had. Um, so when we were dissolving things before, it would get kind of uh, gummy and it might need to be you know, washed a couple extra times. Uh, the new PVA Plus that we have is formulated to dissolve faster, dissolve cleaner, uh, and then work really well for other things uh, like running interface layers on parts. So you can kind of get in there. I have this part changed so that way it's running most of the support structures out of the PLA material and then just capping off those supports with PVA. Uh, so when I dissolve that out, it saves on the more expensive PVA material, but I can still get really, really good quality prints uh, with those interface layers. Uh, and then one thing, kind of using it as a baseline for Polyflex. I know that we did have uh, the templates available for Polyflex before. Uh, there is a change to the new TPU material. Going back to uh, a Polyflex part that I had with our old settings, it is still a bit messier. I don't know if you can really see kind of in here, there's a lot of strain in between all of these gap portions. So on this one, it's, it's a little bit messier, but it is more due to like the templates that we have um, and then the different temperatures that it's running at. And that again can all be optimized. So since we have our new material, uh, we have more control over the templates and kind of the formula for it. So we are, you know, focusing on optimizing uh, for our material and TPU for the best results. Uh, I do want to go ahead and jump into Idea Maker and we'll go through kind of some setup and some fine tuning for this. Uh, now we're in Idea Maker. And if we are going to, I'll go ahead and pull in a standard part just so I can go ahead and get into our settings for what we want to change. Uh, the typical setup for a PVA print when we get into start slicing, uh, we'll have PLA as our you know, default race to game material. And then in Idea Maker, the template for PVA is already pre-built into uh, all the other templates. So if I go to the right extruder from this drop-down menu, we want to go down to PVA. Uh, and then that actually has a set of settings built into uh, this material here. So if we go into the settings for the filament, all of the settings in this section uh, with this box checked will override the settings of any given template that we are applying. And I, if I wanna make any changes to the supports, uh, like the pattern infill type, I can go back in here and make those changes. Uh, I have already made a few, so I actually want to go ahead and reset this template. That'll reset it back to the uh, kind of stock settings for PVA. And then I'll go ahead and slice that. We'll come back and then do some of my preferred changes. Uh, working on any of the PLA templates, I can pick any one of these. I'll just need to modify it for PVA. Go into Edit. Uh, since I want to work with a kind of stock version of the PLA settings, I'll go ahead and restore defaults in the lower left. And then the main uh, settings that you need to change for getting the PVA set up. Under the Extruder tab, we want to go ahead and enable the right extruder configuration. This allows the left and right extruders to run different settings from each other. And you can see here, there are these uh, pencil icons that let us know that these settings in particular are being overridden by that PVA material set to the right extruder. So if I click on these, I actually cannot modify them in the template itself. I need to click that icon and then it opens up the PVA setting and then I can modify the overrides instead. 
I'll go ahead and keep the extrusion width and the retraction speed of extruder switch as default. And then under the support tab, we wanna go ahead and set our supports to all, so it'll automatically generate those. And then we wanna set the support extruder to the right extruder and the dense support extruder to the right extruder as well. Um, so typically these can be used uh, with you know single material uh, just to lower the density of the main support structures, reducing print time and material usage. And then the dense supports are a specific subset of those support layers. Uh, it's going to essentially increase the density uh, of those last few layers before it gets to the part itself. So in the override, we are working with five dense support layers uh, at a 70% infill ratio on top of the typical 30% infill ratio that's going to be used for the rest of the support structure. Last thing we want to do is move the uh, right extruder set for the brim that's going to be put down with the PVA. And then there's another option that we can add to allow cooldown uh, of the inactive extruder. That's basically going to lower the temperature of whichever extruder is not being used to whatever is set here. Uh, if you're working with materials that tend to ooze a bit, uh, this is really good to just lower the temperature and reduce the ooze. Um, but that it is going to increase the print time a little bit because of the extra cooldown and heating time. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind if you are going to enable this setting. Other things that we can modify are going to be under the ooze tab. If we're working with a, a wipe wall and a wipe tower, those are both enabled by the PVA by default. Um, but there are a few other things that we can change and modify as needed uh, if we're working with multiple materials. So we'll go ahead and switch to another model that will use the support structures. And I'll go ahead and start slicing. Uh, so I have our PLA template set up with the supports enabled and those supports are set to the red extruder and the PVA material is set to the red extruder so that overrides pick in. And then once I run the slice on this, I want to go ahead and go into the preview. From here in the initial structure view, uh, I should see that that wipe tower turns on and the wipe wall around that part for the dual material. And then in the bottom right, I'm going to change this from structure to extruder color. And that just helps me confirm uh, that yes, the part is going to be run out of the left as assigned. All the supports are going to run out of the right side. And then working with uh, the other PVA materials, by default, it is set to a line pattern uh, for the infill. Um, it actually, in my experience, will dissolve faster if we set it to a gyroid pattern. Uh, it just allows the water to actually get in through all the support structures and kind of dissolve it all at once rather than trying to break through those grid walls. So when we go back in here under the right extruder, I'll go ahead and change our support infill type to gyroid. And we'll keep the infill the same. Uh, the brim should stay that way. And then we'll also keep the wipe wall and wipe tower enabled. But if you wanted to disable them, uh, this is where you would go ahead and uh, change those. Another thing that I'll do is I will change the uh, wipe wall and wipe tower from the typical interlaced pattern, uh, which they are currently, to a nested pattern. Uh, that's going to switch them from alternating uh, each material in its layer uh, and instead print concentric shells of those two materials. Uh, the wipe wall angle, uh, since you asked, uh, this is going to be, of course, the maximum angle that the wipe wall will hit going in or out towards the part. Um, and that's going to depend on the wipe wall type. So currently I have it set to waterfall. Uh, since this part is all uh, straight up, it actually doesn't need to kick that in. We bring in a different model, then it should be able to show that a little bit better. This file. That one should do a little bit. So yeah, when they're set to the waterfall pattern, uh, it is essentially going to try and keep itself as close to the part as it can. There we go. Um, and that wipe wall angle specifies the maximum angle that the wall can take when it goes back inwards towards the part. You have control over that setting. That's with the typical waterfall form. Uh, if we go ahead and change that instead, into a contoured form, then it um, it tries to match the part as closely as it can, both inwards and out. The waterfall will only essentially go inwards as the part goes out. So yeah, the contoured form is actually matching the outer supports 
uh, and matching the part as closely as you can. And then the last one would be just vertical. That's going to have the wall be entirely up and down. And that's the vertical shell. Uh, so the other thing aside from the wipe wall type, we're going to turn it back to waterfall. Uh, the wipe wall and wipe tower modes. Changing those from interlaced to nested, uh, or the wipe tower mode for multiple, that's just going to print two uh, separate towers for each material. Uh, but typically I'll go ahead and run a nested form, either a circle or a rectangle, so I can change the shape. Uh, but that's just going to have the material be printed again in concentric shells, putting itself on top of itself, so it bonds far. There's no issues with it bonding. So you can see when it gets in here, whenever it's switching to uh, running PLA and PVA, it just runs PVA uh, internally in that outer shell. And then I'll go ahead and disable our wipe wall so we can see those changes to the settings as well. Uh, we go ahead and change the pattern to gyroid. And then there are a couple other things that we can change uh, getting into interface layers for the PVA as well. So that's the gyroid pattern there. And again, when we go ahead and run through and actually dissolve this, uh, all of the channels within the support structures, just make sure that we can get water up against all these supports and dissolve them faster. And then moving in to interface layers. Uh, so if we want to have, uh, again, just those upper and lower sections where those dense supports are gonna be touching, have those set to PVA, then when we go ahead and kind of keep our same settings for uh, the PVA material and then mostly the same settings within the template itself. Uh, under the support tab, I want to change the main support extruder back to left extruder. So we'll use PLA for most of those supports and then just keep the dense supports only set to the right extruder. Uh, if you do want to have kind of more distance and more control over the uh, gaps within the parts, I can increase the amount of dense support layers. That just pulls the PLA further away from the part, so I have more to dissolve away. And then another thing that's going to be important is that you're going to want to increase the support horizontal offset just a little bit. Um, so that way we don't have PLA bonding uh, along the sides, which can happen when we're bringing them a little bit closer. So I will typically step that up to uh, 0.3 or 0.4, depending and then just go with the dense supports set to the right for those interface layers. And then in the new part preview, we have all of the gyroid support and then the extruder color. So since we are working with um, the PLA for the right side, can actually go back in and have uh, a few things changed like lowering the info ratio or changing the pattern just for those main supports uh, and then going back into the dense support section and changing the infill type there so if i want to have different patterns for infill and dent or for uh, main supports and dense supports uh, it's going to be a combination of settings within the pva material overrides and then the template settings itself but that's basically how I go ahead and set up those interface layers, just having the dense supports set to the right side. And then moving into TPU. Uh, so if I go ahead and pull in one of our other models, something like this one. Uh, so running in a model like this, or uh, kind of referencing the, uh, the airless tire model I had before. The settings that we want to modify in that template. We go ahead and work off of the kind of Polyflex template for the time being. Going into here under uh, Edit in the Advanced Settings, I'll set our red extruder back to our default material so those overrides don't kick in. Uh, typically, what I'm looking at for uh, anything in uh, TPU prints is I really want to reduce the amount of stringing that's going to happen around the parts. Um, and then also make sure that it feeds well and that there is, you know, consistent flow uh, so we don't have a risk of jamming while we're running these. Under our extruder tab, uh, we have the options to adjust the you know, retraction speed and the material amount. Uh, I've had pretty good results with our new TPU 
uh, increasing the retraction speed a little bit and the uh, retraction material not to uh, two, two millimeters. I wouldn't really go higher than that, um, but that just allows it to basically pull that extra material back up out of the hot end so it's not directly at the end of the nozzle um, and there's, it's less likely to leak as aggressively with that increased retraction. Working in uh, something else like the coasting distance, uh, this can help with other parts as well if you're seeing kind of uh, beating at end points, but essentially this is going to stop the extruder um, from continually pushing out material as it gets close to the very last section of any layer path uh, and just let the kind of you know residual pressure finish that off. Uh, and that should reduce the stringing as it transitions to something else. So I'll typically set that to a 0.2, uh, or I can increase it as needed, but if I keep increasing it, then I'm running the risk of it uh, stopping the extrusion too soon, and then that can lead to gaps in the layers that's not extruding all the way to the end of the paths. Uh, other things in here is um, adjusting the temperature can help. Typically I'll run RTVU now at uh, 230, uh, the Polyflex template runs at a 225, so there's a slight temperature difference there, uh, but I've had the best results running it at 230 on my own. Uh, it should work with the same cooling, split structures, and then the other things that I had changed for uh, these portions. Uh, if you're working with uh, the outer shell wipe distance wipe speed, for if you're trying to dual print, but pretty much the main thing you'd be changing for reducing the oozing uh, is messing with the temperature a little bit uh, and then the retractions and the coasting distance will cut down on the string as well. Hey, thank you very much for your question, David. Uh, so if you're actually using a, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, um, you can set it up to work on uh, either hot end. The way that that is done is uh, you would first install them on, you know, onto the hot end themselves. You can have it installed on either the left or the right. Um, but when I get into Idea Maker, uh, in order to reflect those new nozzle sizes, you would need to go ahead and just set the uh, left or right nozzle diameter if you have a 0.8 installed on the left or right, just to match that nozzle size. Uh, so if we have it set to the right nozzle, set that to a 0.8 and then back in the template itself go back to our PLA template uh, we just want to have the extruder uh, set for uh, enabling the right extruder configuration since we're running two different nozzle sizes and then we want to just have that match the extrusion width that's going to be in the printer settings uh, from there then you can make more adjustments but just getting it started you can have either uh, any nozzle size on the left or right nozzle it just needs to match in the template and in the printer settings. All right, and that's going to do it for our stream today, guys. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, we'll be doing another one again next week, um, talking about some new things coming up, working with some other people. Um, so again, look forward to that. Looking forward to see you guys in the next stream. Thanks very much for joining me, guys.